Okay, great. So <clears throat> thank you very much for coming to this event. I'm happy to see this many faces. So we have already uh, 29 participants and also people are watching on Facebook. So we are happy that uh, this many people are interested in this topic. Uh, so, okay, uh, let's start. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to ask Alexandra to talk a bit about this topic and then we'll follow through the other points. Thank you, Duri. <clears throat> As you might know, uh, every year, uh, transport, uh, the number of transport is rising in Budapest and generally in Hungary. So, which is causing uh, enormous problems in our city. Uh, one of which is congestion, air pollution, and these problems are leading to the enormous effects as the prematurely deaths and uh, other health issues of the population. So basically, uh, what we as an or environmental organization are proposing is the implementation of the road toll in Budapest. What is this measure? Is to uh, put a special price on uh, cars. This will be pollution-based and distance-based road toll. So basically, owners of the cars whose cars are more polluting have to pay more. And also, they would uh, pay based on the distance which their car is producing. So for example, if your car is uh, uh, of 20th century <laughs> and you uh, drive on it pretty uh, a lot, then you would have to pay more, which will cause the effect that for you, it will be more favorable to, to switch to more eco-friendly, maybe electric car, which is from the 21st century, and maybe even uh, switching to the bicycle or to the source of the public transport. That's the main idea. And uh, now I'm giving uh, back to you the word, Yuri. You can introduce the speakers. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, in today's debate, we will have two teams, one proposition and one opposition. Each team consists of one expert and one uh, debater. So now let me introduce you to the speakers. First, the proposition side ex expert is Andras Lukács. He's, he is a geophysicist, uh, the president and one of the founders of uh, National Federation of Hungarian NGOs, Clean Air Action Group, that Levegő Munkacsoport. He has over 30 years of experience. He's an author and co-author of more than 60 studies and several hundred articles. Uh, the debater in proposition side is Jörn Nemes. He is the former president of Corvinus, De Corvinus Debate Society, and he has been competitively debating for more than five years. He's also a professional debate judge. On the opposition side, we have uh, Dr. Szabolcs Kovács, who is a member of the Budapest Bar Association since 2004, and also the member of the legal committee of the Hungar Hungarian Automobile Associ Association. Since 2018, he is an exclusive lecturer at the School of Trainee Lawyers and also ex exclusive lecturer at the Lawyers Academy. The debater of the opposition side is Peter Kish. He is a member, member and coordinator of Alta Vita Club, and he is as well a competitive debater since 2019. He has debated more than a uh, he has debated with multiple uh, debate societies across Europe, for example, Corvinus, CEU, and uh, Vienna, and also Leiden. Uh, he has also participated in several debate uh, tournaments and public sk uh, speaking skills seminars as well. And let me also talk about a bit of the organizers, so Levegő Munkacsoport or Clean Air Action Group, uh, which is the oldest and one of the most important NGO in Budapest. He's, uh, it is an umbrella or organization for more than for, uh, 39 environmental NGO. Its main field of activities are um, sustainable ur uh, urban development and transport, also sustainable energy and environmental fiscal reform. 
Their activities include public awareness campaigns, research and publishing. And they have already appeared more in media more than 10,000 times. Now let me talk about the other organizer, the Alta Debate Club and the Corvinus Debate Society. They are an English language debate society, uh, which debates in official uh, university and British parliamentary format. Uh, it is run by students who are debating uh, also. It is open for everyone. We, uh, the debate society, have meetings every week, which consists of one workshop and a debate as well. In the debate society, you can learn how to explain things very well, how to think fast, how to, uh, you can also learn rhetorics and critical thinking, and you can improve your confidence. Okay, uh, these are the speakers and uh, organization, uh, organizers, organizers, sorry. <laughs> And now uh, I will talk about the debate rules and how the debate will go. So the debate has a special format. We have two teams, as I already said. Each team uh, consists of one uh, expert and one debater. Uh, each team will have two speeches of 10 minutes and then one speech of three minutes, which is a whip speech its uh, function is to um, summarize the whole debate and talk about the whole debate and ex explain that why their team was better. Um, after the speeches, the audience can ask questions, but we kindly ask the audience to write their questions in the chat box. I would like to also uh, mention that uh, we are recording this um, debate and we are also in Facebook Live. Okay, I think I've explained the format of the debate as well. So I think without further, further ado, we can begin the debate. So I would like to ask the first speaker of the proposition side to deliver their speech. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak about the proposal of the Clean Air Action Group on the uh, implementation of a distance and pollution-based road toll in Budapest. Why would we like to introduce uh, such a measure? It is um, clear that we would like to have a more livable, a more healthy city, a more just society, healthier city, a more just society uh, with less inequalities. So what are the problems uh, with uh, road transport, with car and truck traffic? Um, there are quite a lot of problems. Uh, first, I would like to uh, mention the emission of greenhouse gases. Uh, transport in Budapest is responsible for about 28% of greenhouse gases. And as you probably all know, we have to reduce uh, the emission of greenhouse gases as soon as possible. Another big problem is air pollution. In Budapest, about uh, 2,500 premature deaths are caused by air pollution each year. Of course, this is not only because of transport, but there are also other uh, sources, but transport plays an important role. And also uh, we can see a very quickly growing number of people with asthma. For example, the children with asthma, the number of children with asthma increased uh, uh, twofold, it doubled uh, during the last 15 years. And air pollution comes not only from the exhaust gases, but also from the wear and tear of tires. And uh, the, from this source, uh, a lot of micro microplastics gets into the environment, uh, uh, which causes uh, also big pollution of the air, the soil and waters. But there is an even uh, bigger uh, health issue uh, related to transport. And uh, why is it bigger? I will tell you two figures. Uh, in the European Union, each year, about 400,000 people die prematurely uh, from air pollution. And uh, this is uh, only part of this is due to transport. But uh, due to physical inactivity, 
this year about 1 million people die in the European Union prematurely. And uh, one of the main causes of physical inactivity is uh, road transport. Uh, why? Because uh, many people, uh, more and more people are using cars, traveling by cars, and also because there are uh, less and less place for walking and cycling, and it is uh, very often uh, unpleasant to walk or cycle, and it's dangerous, and you have to uh, uh, suffer from air pollution and from uh, noise and so on. So. Uh, this is an enormous problem that uh, people uh, do not go uh, out on the streets to walk and, and uh, have physical activity, both uh, adults and children. And uh, if we are already talking about uh, the, how uh, much space the cars are occupied, uh, cars occupy, uh, we must talk about also about the lack of uh, green areas, lack of trees. Although we know that uh, it, uh, many studies prove that in uh, cities or in streets where there are green areas, where there are trees, the people are healthier and happier than in streets where there are no green uh, surfaces. And uh, one of the main reasons for the disappearance of green areas is the fact that uh, more and more uh, places are covered with asphalt, occupied by cars, uh, by uh, uh, by uh, feeding stations and so on. So uh, this is an enormous problem which must be tackled. And uh, uh, when talking about uh, these covered areas, you know, with uh, areas covered with asphalt and cars, uh, there is also an, uh, another big problem that's temperature. Uh, during the summer heat waves, the temperature of the surface uh, of the asphalt or cars uh, can be as 40 degrees, up to 40 degrees higher than the surface of a soil uh, which is uh, covered by trees. And this is really a question of life and death for many people. Uh, statistics show that in Budapest, during the heat waves, the number of deaths increases by uh, up to 30%. So it is a very, uh, it is a very, very big problem. Uh, also, we mentioned also noise. Uh, which is also, we do not speak so much about the problem of noise, but uh, it is uh, well documented that noise is also uh, very detrimental to health. And all these issues about which uh, I talked have costs and the costs are enormous. Uh, about two years ago, the European Commission published a study which uh, came to the conclusion that in Hungary, the users of cars and trucks pay only about one third of the cost which they cause. In other words, the, uh, the uh, prices of car and truck use must be uh, raised three times in order to make the, uh, the users of cars and trucks pay the full costs. And uh, if prices do not reflect the true costs, if they are uh, much lower than the uh, uh, than uh, than the uh, uh, than the cost, then demand increases abnormally, and we can experience this increased demand uh, on the congestion and uh, on all, all the problems which I mentioned. And this is also very unjust socially because. Uh, it, it is clear that first of all, poor people live in places where, which are more most polluted. They cannot go to uh, green, uh, buy a house in a green area and uh, do other things to to reduce the health effects of uh, of this all this pollution. And also, as I told you, uh, there is an practically an enormous subsidy. The society is financing the use of the cars. And if uh, this is the case, then it means that if you use ca uh, car more and you use a, uh, buy, have a bigger car and you drive it more and uh, consume more uh, fuel, then uh, you receive a bigger subsidy. Uh, so in short, if uh, the present situation means 
that the rich people are, are subsidized at the expense of the poor. And this must be, uh, uh, this causes uh, enormous inequality. So uh, what, what we would like, uh, as I said, if we would introduce the road toll, uh, that, uh, we would have a more livable and healthier city and happier people. And what is also very important that we do not have time. We need some, a measure which can be implemented very quickly, because if we do not don't do it, we will have uh, more uh, people dying, more uh, people getting sick, and we get, and there will be uh, also more and more losses, uh, economic losses. We lose because of all these uh, problems caused by transport each year hundreds of billions of foreigns. And I must mention also that there is a legal requirement to introduce the congestion charge or the road toll. Um, this was one of the conditions for the financing of the uh, construction of the fourth metro line in Budapest. The European, uh, there is a contract between the European Commission and the Hungarian government that the Budapest municipality will uh, introduce the congestion charge uh, at the same time uh, when the uh, metro line is put into operation. That was about four years ago. So, uh, sorry, seven years ago. It was seven years ago in uh, 2014. And uh, so the European Commission is always reproaching the Hungarian government why it is not introducing it, but uh, nothing happens. I would also like to speak about the use of the revenues. Of course, there will be uh, several uh, tens of uh, billions of foreigns of revenues. And we propose that these revenues must be used uh, for improving public transport, improving the condition for, conditions for cycling and uh, walking, and for generally for uh, environment-friendly transport. And partly this uh, revenue should be used to provide uh, social assistance to poor people. And uh, we think that uh, this uh, system should be uh, introduced uh, gradually as far as the uh, level of the tariff is concerned. So we should uh, begin with a relatively lower traffic and then uh, lower, lower, lower tariff, and we should gradually increase uh, this tariff in a predictable uh, way. So, uh, and, uh, so thank you very much. I think my time is up. So thank you very much for uh, uh, listening to me. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the sound you hear, uh, I didn't say that, but it is uh, um, signing that you uh, only have one minute left and uh, seconds, uh, second sound signs that you don't have any uh, time left. So uh, yeah, that's for the speakers to know. Uh, and for the audience, I'd like to say that after the next speech, you get the chance to vote first and after the, all the speeches you get the and the questions, you get the chance to vote again. And uh, the difference will tell that uh, which side won. So uh, be ready to vote after the next uh, speech. And uh, after I said that, I'd like to ask the first speaker of opposition to deliver his, his speech. Thank you, very, thank you very much. And thank you for the introduction. And especially thank you for the opportunity, opportunity that uh, I can uh, take place in this debate. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you that uh, we are not against the road toll. We do think that the road toll itself shall not be supported or rejected. Only a road toll with rational territorial scope and amount could be a subject of uh, investigation, uh, provided that the, that the necessary developments have been uh, implemented. Therefore, it is very important, according to us, that first the conditions are set, the necessary developments uh, are done, and if this uh, precondition uh, uh, is uh, uh, done, then we can start having a discussion about the details of the introduction of the road toll. 
if such uh, preconditions are not uh, 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 realized, then uh, people would just think that this is a new tax that they have to pay. Uh, they, do not, they do not receive anything from the state as a return. And uh, the road toll would just uh, uh, mean a new kind of problem. The old problems will not be solved, will not be solved but uh, uh, they will uh, relocate it. For example, uh, uh, people who do not enter the downtown area of Budapest, they will look for uh, 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 parking spaces uh, outside of the uh, 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 area and uh, um, uh, traffic jam will, uh, will be there instead of the downtown area, area of Budapest. So uh, I think if the preconditions are not met, then socially it is unacceptable to introduce uh, the road door. Let me tell you that uh, 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 in the year of 2015, uh, the mayor of Budapest, Istvan Talos, stated that um, uh, if uh, uh, we do not want to repay 180 billion uh, forints, which was received for the building of the Metro Line 4, then uh, uh, the uh, road toll system has to be introduced by the end of 2016. It has not been introduced and uh, not one uh, single foreign uh, was paid back and the European Union was not uh, uh, asking for uh, the repayment. They didn't uh, 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 start any kind of official procedure. So any kind of uh, uh, um, mentioning of the repayment obligation is uh, 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 clearly unreliable. Uh, a long, long time ago, but not in a far, far galaxy away, uh, in Budapest in 2008, uh, um, uh, the municipality of Budapest uh, accepted the development, the so-called development plan of the Budapest transport system, which was proposed for the period between 2008 and 2020. And this uh, 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 plan clearly indicated that uh, the road toll system may be introduced by only with uh, certain uh, conditions which have to be met. And, and this uh, plan uh, uh, mentioned that, for example, the public transport uh, has to be uh, developed, uh, has to be, uh, uh, must develop, and uh, not only the capacity must be expanded, but also high quality level of service uh, shall be introduced because it is a vital, a uh, point that um, um, uh, the public transport shall be an alternative of road transport, especially cars. And I do think that uh, this expectation has not been met uh, 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 since then. Just uh, uh, a couple of personal uh, uh, examples. I did try to uh, use public transport to get to my office. In the morning, it was okay. It took only 30 minutes, but when I wanted to leave the office uh, in the evening or in the late uh, afternoon, it took me about an hour and a half to get home. This is not a clear alternative. If, uh, if uh, 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 we want to uh, 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 have the people leave the cars behind, then uh, clear alternatives have to be introduced. Uh, another question, uh, uh, P and R, uh, uh, parking spaces. Uh, before the debate, I have checked. Uh, there is, uh, according to the public transport organization, there is about approximately 5,600 uh, 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 PNR uh, spaces in Budapest, partly for free, partly uh, uh, people have to pay a parking fee. Uh, in Stockholm, uh, which has uh, approximately 1 million uh, people living in the city, uh, before they have introduced the uh, toll system, uh, they built one, uh, they built 10,000 uh, uh, parking spaces. So uh, uh, at least seven or uh, 
maybe even more uh, uh, parking spaces are missing in Hungary, which would uh, enable uh, people to leave their uh, cars behind and use public transport. Another uh, very important issue, uh, the development of the streets. Uh, the M0 um, uh, uh, ring, which is uh, uh, around Budapest, is still not finished. Until this is not done, uh, toll system in Budapest cannot be introduced because uh, 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 many people use the roads of Budapest as transit zones. And if they are not able to go around the city, then they have to come into the city. I would be very glad if um, uh, Kossuth Lajosuth and Rakotsi would, would be given back to the pedestrians and the stores would uh, reopen. But uh, until uh, uh, um, um, an alternative solution is not provided by the municipality or by the, um, by the uh, uh, state, then uh, people just cannot uh, uh, avoid uh, coming into the downtown area of Budapest. In the recent years, a lot of uh, uh, office buildings and residential parks were uh, built. New uh, investments can be found, especially uh, in the uh, south side of, uh, of Buda. But unfortunately, uh, and, uh, and these investments clearly generate motor vehicle uh, uh, traffic, but uh, roads were not uh, developed. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that uh, 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 the parties involved uh, had not the uh, uh, goal uh, uh, to, to uh, develop the, uh, the roads. Uh, so it is clear for us that uh, uh, um, the introduction of road toll in Budapest may be a possible solution for those problems that were uh, mentioned uh, uh, by Andras Lukács. But first, uh, the uh, 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 alternatives have to be uh, uh, developed and have to be shown to the people that, yes, they can choose a real alternative. And until this alternative is not uh, uh, um, uh, uh, ready then uh, until that point of time the uh, um, uh, the road toll system cannot be introduced in Budapest. Another important issue uh, how will be the uh, income used uh, uh, if uh, if there will be any income I have to tell you uh, frankly and um, and there is no clear obligation that uh, the income uh, which uh, or the revenue which comes for, uh, from the uh, road toll uh, will be used for the uh, infrastructure, for it, uh, the public transport will be uh, financed and uh, uh, the road maintenance will be financed. So this is another very important issue that uh, uh, we have to be sure that, uh, that the, uh, the income will be used for the same uh, uh, um, uh, in, uh, investment uh, and and uh, 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 the traffic will be uh, more efficient. Uh, um, um, another uh, point that I would like to mention that uh, um, as I as I said earlier, these investments have to be. Uh, done before the road toll system is introduced in Budapest, because uh, we may all know that uh, promises are not enough. If uh, the road toll system will be introduced, then uh, uh, we cannot be sure when the mentioned uh, investments will be done. Uh, we all know uh, how long it took to build, for example, the M7 uh, 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 highway. It took decades. We all know that uh, it has been promised that the M0 uh, uh, um, ring will be built. A part of it has not been built until today, and uh, the last part of it is still postponed. So uh, 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 promises okay. are not enough. Sorry, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this nice speech. And now I would like to ask the 
um, the viewers to uh, vote. So on your see on your uh, screen, you will see uh, this voting, and now you can uh, pick one, and you should pick one. And also, uh, who are watching on Facebook, you can also write in the chat uh, if you are um, supporting proposition or supporting opposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, the votes are in. And now we can move to the next round. Uh, you'll see the results of this vote after the end of the whole debate, and we can see the difference between the two votes. So now I would like to ask the second speaker of proposition to deliver his speech. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this debate. It's a huge honor to me to be uh, part of a debate with uh, such experts in, in this field that I actually care about. And I'm really proud to be on site proposition in this debate. So, uh, Andras and I had the basic argument that, the, that what he outlined lots of huge problems, environmental, health problems, and various other problems are uh, plaguing our, our city right now. And we need a solution that meets criteria, uh, many different criteria. One of it that it's just, one is that it's effective, and three, that it is quick enough. So and we believe Rotol meets all of them. Uh, in this debate so far, uh, side opposition was very generous to us and uh, didn't content much of, of our intentions and, and goals. I think the main contention here is about the implementation and the time scale and, and what to the effect uh, we should um, do these things. So to put it into context, solutions that they are proposing. So one of the solution, uh, one of the criteria they are proposing is finishing uh, the M0 line. So the problem with that and with any infrastructure project is that it is long and takes many, many years. Uh, and the second problem is, uh, even though it's, it's a solution, but it's a solution in the wrong way. It basically makes uh, riding your car more easy and more feasible. It's, uh, it's a problem that generate, it, it, it's a solution that generates uh, the problem itself, meaning that you know, more cars will be on the roads in the end. Um, when the Southern part of the N0 line was completed, the extra, road space was taken up by new cars within two weeks. So clearly extra road building cannot be a solution of uh, where the problem is the number of cars. The second problem is uh, the number of park and ride parking spaces that they, they uh, propose. Uh, yes, there are about 5,000 uh, parking spaces right now and another 5,000 in proposed. The problem with this is that the number of cars in the Budapest area increases about with about 40,000 every year, meaning that clearly extra parking space cannot be uh, a viable solution. And with all the infrastructure constraints that we have already said that you know they are slow to be built. Here, it's, it's a really important emphasize that the problem of, of air pollution, of, uh, of the heat waves, of, of uh, CO2 emissions 
are a very immediate problems right now that affect people's lives right now and you know cause uh health problems cause uh mental disorder mental distress and any various sorts of other problems so a solution has to be quick uh and our, our solution can be implemented like right of the way uh this or a very similar system is already used by uh, mm, not cars but um, um, heavy duty traffic like uh, uh, trucks that are monitored by uh, various Hungarian agencies. That system can be expanded to any uh, cars systems. So. Uh, we established that this is a, we need this quick solution. And this is a quick solution. Why also this solution is uh, just and effective. This is the just system uh, because there is currently a huge injustice in uh, the way people use cars and use roads. As Andras already mentioned to you, uh, car users only pay about a third of what their total social cost is. Uh, we might see that, you know, uh, gasoline is expensive and other taxes on cars are also expensive, but still the environmental and social harms are so immense that this is still not enough. So we have to raise uh, the price of basically causing this uh, social problem. Because so far, we have been subsidizing people by you know, not taxing them or not making them pay enough to do uh, activities that are harmful. And it, it led for them to make you know, environmentally and, and socially costly lifestyle choices, lifestyle choices. It doesn't mean that these people are bad people. It, it just means that our current system uh, makes a way of living much more feasible, much more attractive than it ideally should be. And I think we should definitely correct this measure uh, and, and reintroduce the justice. So they um, raised the question how this money will be spent. So yes, we don't know it, it, it is actually will be developed by you know the policymakers that will actually be at the table but uh, our proposal here is uh, spending it on on green infrastructure development that also further our goals of uh, you know lowering co2 emissions or it could be uh, just a direct subsidy for every person in the in the country you could just give it directly back to people and uh, uh, there are some um, estimates that uh, Lavegi Munkacsopat had, had already made so with uh, with all that it's it's not with an introductory level of uh, 10 foreigns per kilometer driven that could mean a direct subsidy for every uh, but not, not every about eight lower eighty percent of uh, earners in Hungary. Uh, every per, every person about thirty thousand foreigns per year. That's a huge subsidy that people might actually like, and it will be a redistribution of wealth from those who use cars and and pollutes our environment towards those who don't do these things. Um, Another issue that come up in, in this debate is, um, is that it would just replace traffic. It's, it's not an effective way to do it. We believe that it, it, it can be and it should be made effective in a way that uh, we propose it. It is that it, it is a miles, uh, kilometers driven system. And it's not a zone based system that, you know, if you enter Budapest Center, then you pay. It, it, it should be a system that 
encompasses the whole area. I mean, ideally, we would like it to encompass the whole country, but we are only debating about Budapest right now. But it, it should encompass whole, the whole city, and it should be based on you know, how many miles you uh, drive with your cars and how much the car pollutes. Uh, and considering that most of uh, that, that the Budapest traffic uh, contributes about a, four, a third of the whole of the country's air pollution and um, and yeah, air pollution and traffic, then it, it, it is a considerable measure that not only has the effect in, uh, an immediate effect on the lives of people who live in Budapest and, and uh, make their city a more livable uh, place where, you know, there are more, there could be more green spaces. Uh, you can feel that the air is cleaner. You can, you know, walk uh, alongside lots of uh, pedestrian roads that currently were occupied by cars, but also it will measurably uh, uh, have an effect on the whole environment and the emissions of the whole country. So for these reasons, I hope that you are convinced that uh, the Roto system is something that should be implemented and sh should be implemented right now. And I'm very proud to propose. Great, thank you very much. This is a really nice piece of speech as well. And now uh, I would like to ask the second speaker of the opposition side to deliver his speech. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm also proud to be able to represent uh, my debate club and uh, also uh, the views of, uh, of many people of our society, because I myself, I am coming from the suburbs, for example, so I can bring another perspective to this debate, uh, whereas uh, opposing the motion uh, on the grounds that were proposed by, uh, uh, by uh, my teammate, um, Saborch. So basically, uh, what we have seen so far is that um, the proposition side, so the cleaner working group that want to uh, introduce uh, this measure, they are thinking in, very, in a very idealistic uh, way of this whole issue. So that they imagine that there is this road toll which we're going to introduce. Uh, and so afterwards, uh, because of this easy and quick fix, uh, many, many societal underlying problems are going to be just resolved, uh, you know, somewhat magically, somewhat uh, uh, spontaneously. So if this measure is that, uh, that straightforward, um, we would be very much surprised if, if that could deliver all these, uh, all these promises. But um, let, me, let me also elaborate on, on a couple of points before. So first of all, as, um, as, uh, as, my, as a previous speaker from our site uh, has explained, um, and as also, Mm, some uh, speakers of, uh, of from the um, the opposition uh, from the proposition side explained, Budapest has many structural problems. Uh, many structural problems that have to do with infrastructure, but also have to do with the planning of the city. So Budapest, for the moment, is optimized for cars, right? So uh, it has been built, constructed uh, over the, the past decades, uh, so that cars could use the public spaces efficiently. And that's one thing. And then second thing is that uh, the, the development of a public transit uh, has not been able to uh, match the development of, uh, of, of roads. And still uh, some measures are not uh, in place that would uh, facilitate for cars uh, to go around the city. Because basically there are uh, two types of, of, of uh, drivers, one that is going to the city center to do something or into the city to do something, and the other one that what, just wants to, you know, get around the city and, 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 and move along. So um, for the first uh, type of first, for the first type of driver, we would, if I, uh, we would need uh, a good um, parking places somewhere uh, outside of the city or like on the border of the city so that they could, they could park the car and uh, get on the public transit or get on the bikes. Uh, and then go to the center. This is now not provided equally in every part of Budapest. Uh, well, essentially, 
the suburban railway network is very underdeveloped. Uh, this does not provide uh, an efficient and uh, high quality service so that uh, people, for example, living in the suburbs, which is growing uh, by the numbers um, from year to year, there are more and more people moving out to the suburbs, which uh, is called gentrification, uh, and which is also the phenomenon that many people from the countryside are moving to next to Budapest so that they can get better opportunities. These people in the suburbs are underserved by public transit. They are underserved, so they, they need to have the opportunity to use their cars and park somewhere closer to the city center where they could eventually uh, use the public transit. But this is not given, this is not uh, an option that they have for the moment. Um, and for the other type of driver that wants to basically go around the city or exit, go from north to east uh, to south or, or, or from east to west, that uh, kind of person now is almost forced to drive through uh, the city center because first, because as my partner mentioned, the ring is not completed around Budapest. So uh, you can, you really have to go a long, 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 long way around the city to, to, to be able to go around. Or uh, as we could see in, in, uh, in um, these years, there's a lot of reconstruction works on, uh, on these highways that are surrounding Budapest. So essentially uh, like going around the city uh, on a, this uh, unfinished ring is not really an option. So many people are already forced to uh, find their ways uh, through the city. And um, we, by not providing to them this service, we are basically making them pay for something that the government should have provided to them. And uh, this is quite uh, unjust uh, in a way. So if, as uh, the proposition is speaking about the just system, we also have to think of the justice and, uh, and the equality for people who are like by, you know, by birth, they live outside of the city or, or those who uh, are not like connected to the city in any ways, but need to go uh, through it or need to, to do something in, in the city. So basically we, uh, our side sees a new sort of inequality emerging between uh, those people who are living in the, uh, within the city and who, are, uh, who have better service, better access to like all services, but also to public transit who uh, can cycle easier uh, within the city. Uh, and then those people who are living on the outskirts of the city or who are, who are living in the in suburbs, which uh, are getting more and more, as I said before, uh, many people are moving outside of the city because of uh, rising uh, um, uh, home prices and because of many social factors. But essentially, we, we see that uh, the population of the suburbs is growing uh, every year. So uh, therefore, these people who live there uh, are less served and less uh, less able to uh, use the same uh, services as those who live in, who live in the downtown. So this, uh, the introduction of, of uh, road toll uh, for the moment, that would be very much a discriminative measure against them because uh, as also my partner mentioned, they would, it would have to take much, it would, it would take them, to them much longer to be able to get to uh, the city center to like, for example, reach some services or be able to, to do their business. Um, and that would cause actual economic harm. So for them to travel longer, having to travel longer or having to pay um, money for, uh, for using their cars, that would cause like uh, additional costs measured in time, measured in, uh, in efficiency. Therefore, we, we don't believe that you have, to, you, you have to force them to undergo this. Um, yes, and then um, as also my partner mentioned and uh, this is something that I, I really don't see uh, in the in the proposition side. That, well, basically they they are they are talking about all these ideas of how uh, of how they would want to spend this money. Where whether uh, there would have to be some trees planted here or some uh, suburban railways developed there or 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 what sort of developments they imagine uh, from this money that is coming in from the road toll. But essentially, we see no legal guarantees, no guarantees whatsoever. From the municipality, from uh, the um, basically no guarantees from uh, from the decision makers that this money would actually be spent in a way on the long term uh, as uh, the cleaner group imagines, which would be of course very nice and we would also support that. But as long as uh, this all is just a promise, we see that promises are not really uh, working uh, in this country. So we would want to see a really detailed uh, plan and a really detailed um, um, 
and an efficient strategy to develop uh, the, the infrastructure of Budapest. Um, because otherwise, uh, the introduction of this road toll would, as I explained before, that would create new inequalities that would force people to uh, either pay or or, uh, or commute more. And so that would that would make uh, that would make uh, some inequalities deeper between, for example, uh, poorer people and richer people. For richer people, paying uh, some amount of money does not matter as much as for, like, for example, some poorer uh, persons who would also want to use maybe their, their cars, but uh, who, because of this measure, have to pay proportionately more uh, uh, of their income of their salary to be able to use the same uh, services as uh, as other people. So on one hand because of the inequalities on the other hand because of uh, of the lacking legal guarantees uh, and uh, the opportunity for corruption and the other on the on the third uh, um, point because of the lacking alternatives we believe that uh, the introduction of this measure would lead to uh, a lot of social um, well dissatisfaction uh, that's that would be very unacceptable for uh, many people that would lead to a lot of social um, criticism and, uh, and eventually backlash, which uh, with a change of uh, leadership, for example, uh, uh, either a change of government or a change of uh, municipality, leaders of municipality, um, that could uh, basically lead to, that could basically backfire. So the, the, um, the new leadership could, um, could just uh, reverse this change. And therefore that would be a very risky, well, that would be a very risky initiative. So if it backfires, Basically, um, and 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 the road toll is uh, is revoked. Then, then basically, uh, this would be a big, big uh, issue for for the green movement, which uh, has many nice and supportable goals, but which uh, should not risk using this toll as uh, their most important uh, uh, goal for the city of Budapest. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Uh, so we have uh, come to a, come to the end of our first uh, first uh, round. So we have heard two ten minutes, four ten minutes speeches, and now uh, there will be two three minute speeches, which will summarize the whole debate. And after that, we will ask the audience to uh, vote again about this motion. And after the result, results will come in, we will um, summarize the points and see which side won this debate. Uh, so, so we see what will come, come next. So um, I will ask the last speaker of the proposition side to um, close this debate of their side. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I would like to respond to some of the, the uh, things which were uh, mentioned. Uh, first of all, about uh, public transport. Um, uh, as we said, this uh, system should be, the uh, road toll should be introduced uh, gradually. So if we can uh, introduce a road toll, which will uh, 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 reduce car traffic by, for example, 10%, this would be, it could be easily uh, taken by tra public transport and also some of the people will uh, ride a bike so is, this is uh, this will not be a problem and then uh, with the uh, revenues uh, public transport uh, should be uh, could be gradually improved and uh, uh, what the opposition is uh, trying to suggest that uh, <laughs> uh, we, we would like to prohibit the movement of cars. We do not want to prohibit the movement. We just want to uh, then uh, the users of cars to pay the cost they cause. And uh, the, uh, you say that uh, the road system is optimized for cars. Yes, uh, that's, uh, we, uh, we completely agree with that. And this must be changed. The road system uh, must be for all users, for pedestrians, for children, for cyclists, and not only for cars. This is not a livable city. In all cities which have uh, uh, are really viable. You can look at the Dutch cities or Copenhagen. The, there is an enormous uh, 
uh, uh, share is is done of this travel is done by public transport and by bicycles. For example, in Copenhagen, uh, about uh, fifty more than fifty percent of the people go to work uh, by bicycle, and the uh, uh, weather in Copenhagen is much uh, harsher than in Budapest. Also. Uh, you mentioned the people uh, who drive through the, uh, the city and uh, we have to build new roads for them. This is only a very small fraction, a few percent of the, uh, of the drivers come into the, uh, go across the city. All the, all, all the, almost all the traffic is coming to the city, going to, from the city or internal in the city. So this is not a, 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 a solution. And uh, these are, you may have spoke about additional costs for the drivers. This is not an additional cost. They are just, uh, they caused all these costs, but they are not paying uh, these costs. Uh, they, they must uh, pay. And uh, those people who move to the suburbs uh, are coming in and causing enormous costs and pollution uh, to the people here. And uh, you say that uh, the opposition said that uh, the uh, that uh, these uh, 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 the suburbanization is going uh, on and is increasing. But we we have to uh, stimulate the peop uh, people to come back to Budapest and not to continue because this is uh, really consuming so much energy and causing so much pollution. The suburbanization is uh, is. Uh, stimulated by the cheap use of cars. And this has enormous costs in uh, social costs and uh, environmental costs. And- uh, Sorry, Andras, your time yes. is over. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you very much. And now for the last speech, uh, I would like to ask the last speaker of the opposition side to close this whole debate. Thank you. Uh, I would just uh, quickly go over and summarize our position. Also reacting to reacting to the previous speakers from uh, from the proposition side. So I think it's very nice when they uh, cite the example of uh, Copenhagen and, and other like cities that have planned uh, everything around bikes and uh, pedestrians for the past 50 years, which has not been the case for Budapest. So therefore, we think it's a very inadequate uh, example. Um, people are not um, happy necessarily to, to having to drive into the city, but if they don't have a, a better opportunity or an opportunity that is actually uh, worth uh, for them the, the, the hustle, then they will just, uh, they will just yeah, pick driving. So it, it is essentially the role of the government to provide these services to the people and not like sort of punishing the people that are, are not able or that are discriminated by the existing services for using their cars. Uh, so first comes as, that is sort of the core of our argumentation, first come the infrastructure development and basically the, the capacity development, uh, both in uh, you know, numbers and quality, uh, both for the public transit, both, both for the, the parking and the bike lanes. Like from many suburbs, you cannot cycle into Budapest. There's not, it's not an option, right? Uh, you have to pay for uh, carrying your bike on the public transit. Like, like what sort of uh, alternative is that? Not, it's not an alternative. So people are really, in many cases, are just way better off uh, using their cars, um, which is not ideal. Of course, we, we would really love to see more green uh, in the city center. We'd really love to see more cyclists and more pedestrians. But as long as, uh, as, long as uh, the infrastructure is not given, people will not, will not uh, do that. And, 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 and this measure would just simply backfire um, because it's, uh, as the proposition very proudly claims, that's a quick fix to all the issues of the city, which uh, we think is rather uh, a quick fix in a bad sense because it's shifting uh, the attention and problem, uh, shifting the attention away from the real underlying structural issue. The bad infrastructure, um, underdeveloped infrastructures uh, or the old vehicles, like many people have old uh, cars because they either cannot afford or they were not incentivized to buy a better cars that are less polluting uh, or electric cars eventually. And also the, the, the main underlying problem is, is a very uh, old school uh, design of the, of the Budapest uh, transit uh, system. So 
um, as, as, as long as these are not tackled uh, efficiently, um, the, the introduction of a road toll is not realistic. Um, and, uh, and we just really don't see that all the incomes that are coming in from the, the road toll would be very, um, first, first of all, that would be not as much of an income as to be able to develop, like for example, whole train lines, whole metro lines, that, like you would need an enormous amount of money to, to, um, to develop these, uh, to, to adapt to Budapest, to be more uh, pedestrian and, and uh, public transit friendly. So um, essentially um, the introduction of, of a road toll is not going to bring all that money, all that much money, but in turn it is going to create uh, an, enormous, an enormous tension uh, between like, as I already mentioned, suburb people, downtown people, and also between social classes uh, so, uh, in normal social tensions, uh, social... Um, Sorry, like, later your time is over. Yes, so, and therefore we think that's going to be the backlash and therefore it is uh, unacceptable uh, in the present form. So we, proud, we are proud to uh, oppose again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, now we have reached the end of uh, the whole debate. And now we would like to ask the audience to write their questions in chat boxes. So in the chat box in Zoom and also, uh, also uh, at Facebook. So you can ask que uh, questions uh, in the Facebook Live as well. So we have a question uh, from Facebook that, uh, how, uh, I think this is for opposition. So how can we tackle these infrastructural issues effectively? Sure. Sure, uh, Peter, can I answer it? Okay. This is, uh, this is a, uh, uh, um, an obligation of the municipalities and uh, the state, uh, uh, as we have uh, mentioned earlier, uh, new streets and new uh, 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 parking spaces uh, have to be built if we already know where the borders, for example, uh, of the toll system will be. This is a this is a very important question uh, that uh, or issue that uh, first we have to know what exactly the toll system should look like. Where will be uh, the borders? Uh, for example, the um, borders could be uh, theoretically uh, 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 where the Margit. Uh, uh, Kerwood is or where the Nagy Kerwood is. Another possibility that uh, uh, the Hungaria Boulevard or Hungaria Kerwood would be the border. This is very important to, to know because all the uh, uh, possible developments should be done accordingly. Um, if I may just add something. So uh, regard with regards to the um like that the argument that uh, the drivers are not contributing, drivers are indeed paying uh, lots of taxes, lots of uh, VAT, uh, excess tax and, uh, and, and tax after, you know, because of they are possessing a vehicle. So that would, uh, these revenues would also be able to be diverted towards uh, these development projects. Okay. <laughs> So I think we answer this question. Uh, okay, Andras. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, as uh, we already said, uh, we would like to have, uh, do not, we do not want a zone, but we would like to have um, you know, a system introduced for all of Budapest and after that in the whole country, and uh, which is based uh, not on zones, but on uh, distance and pollution. And then uh, about it, um, where should, uh, who, how should this infrastructure, uh, new infrastructure uh, be financed? Uh, well, first of all, uh, the, already these uh, taxes on uh, cars and uh, fuel and so on are used for some purpose in the state budget. So where should we take it from? From education, from healthcare or, or what? 
And as I already uh, uh, said, and this is not uh, uh, my uh, uh, personal opinion, but this is the official uh, statement of the European Commission and OECD that the users of cars uh, do not pay the full costs. So this is uh, socially very, very unjust. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone have uh, any questions? Okay, if not, we have a proposition question from Facebook as well. So the question says that how much improvement, improvement this policy would mean for the citizens on its own? Uh, yes, uh, then, uh, well, it, it of course uh, depends on how this uh, system will be introduced, how, what will be the uh, size of the tariff, uh, but uh, at first uh, we'd like to have a, a system which would at least eliminate or almost eliminate all of all the congestion. And uh, this would already this would be also uh, uh, good for most of the car drivers because they will not have to uh, wait in the uh, congested streets. And uh, and air pollution is um, very much depends on the, whether the car can go freely or whether it is uh, stuck in the congestion. If it is uh, in the congestion and it is uh, going very slowly and all the time braking and uh, accelerating, then air pollution increases a lot. So uh, uh, the uh, air pollution will decrease and it will be much easier uh, for also for cars to travel in the city. Okay, great. Uh, opposition, anything to add to this operation? No, that's okay. on my side. Okay, uh, so we have a question for, uh, for proposition again. So how would you deal with the problem of inequality caused by introducing the road toll? Uh, well, there is a very there are very good examples all over the world how they uh, uh, deal with inequality and also there are uh, very bad examples. Uh, a good example is Canada where they uh, introduced a CO2 tax on fuel and they redistributed this um, money to uh, the people uh, in a uh, more or less equally. Uh, so uh, the, pe uh, the people could decide for what they use the money. Uh, they could uh, use this money to drive as much as they uh, drove uh, before the introduction of the system. And they could uh, uh, decide to use this money for something else. We propose a similar system, both in Budapest and in the, in the whole country, but a similar system were, uh, were introduced uh, in Iran, in uh, Indonesia, in Ghana, uh, that uh, the money was redistributed. And it, it is a very important uh, uh, part of our uh, proposal that uh, money uh, should, a large part of the money should be given back to the people. Can I, can I add something? Um, this, is a, this is a promise, but there is no obligation again. Uh, let's give it back to the people, but who has the obligation to give it back to the people. I would like to also add that in Hungary, there is a, a, a lot of tax on the gas. La, most part that we pay for a liter of a gasoline is tax. So uh, I don't think that uh, this could be, the, the, the Canadian uh, uh, solution or example could be uh, used here in Hungary as well. Okay, thank you. Andras, anything to add to that? Uh, well, I, I think that this uh, system could be used anywhere. It, as I said, it, it was used. Uh, and um, well, uh, maybe you feel that uh, the, uh, there is already a high tax, but still it doesn't cover the cost. The costs are, as I told you, it is, they are enormous. J just think about it. If you uh, 
uh, your uh, colleague who works in your uh, office or your uh, business gets sick, uh, that's the, probably the biggest cost for you. And also if in, in your family, if somebody gets seriously ill or dies, uh, of course there is the grief, but it is also an enormous cost, especially if this is a wage earner who, who gets sick. So it's, it, these are terrible costs and these are not paid by those who cause these costs. This must be included in the price. Otherwise, the whole system will collapse sooner or later. OK, thank you. The next, next question is for proposition. Oh, no, for opposition, sorry. Uh, so what do you have to say about the fact that by decreasing congestion, the road toll would also save the time for car drivers? So important travels could be performed faster. Uh, this is theoretically true if the preconditions are met. For example, if there is enough P and R parking space and I do easily find where I wish to park, then this is true. Then in this case, uh, uh, my uh, time spent on journey uh, decreases. But if I have to look for a, a parking space, for uh, a relatively long period of time, then my uh, journey, the time spent on my journey does not decrease. And as we mentioned earlier, the problem is not solved, but uh, uh, the problem is, uh, 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 can be seen not in the downtown area, but the place where I try to park my car. It shifts the problem, basically. Yeah, and also one addition to this, so basically, yeah, important drives might be faster, but also many other people who for either for economic or uh, other necessity uh, cannot afford to pay this tax. Therefore, they would have to, uh, at the present uh, situation, they would have to use the public transit, for which, uh, which would take them more time. That's a, a lot of time lost on, on, on commuting. Um, so we also have to take that into account, not just the time that some people gain on their very important, uh, you know, drives. That's a very subjective thing, I think. And maybe one more thing, uh, the P and R parking spaces are only partly free in Budapest. For uh, uh, some parking spaces you have to pay for. So may, may I reply? Uh, yes, of course. Yes, so uh, first of all, uh, about P, uh, P plus R, uh, parking P and R, uh, parking places, uh, forget about it because uh, th this, this is impossible to build uh, uh, such parking places. Uh, as uh, it was mentioned, there are 5,600 P and uh, people are uh, P and R uh, parking places in Budapest. There are about 5,000 in uh, in the uh, Pest County. So, uh, and there are uh, 1 million and 200,000 cars. There is no money, no place uh, to, to build uh, so many parking uh, P plus R. Each, uh, each day, 330,000 cars enter into Budapest. Uh, how, how many, par if you build 10,000 more par uh, plus R parking places, what will happen? And we, we saw what happened at uh, uh, Örmező. They built 1,500 parking places. They destroyed a lot of green areas. Uh, uh, the residents protested against it because they wanted to, to preserve the green areas and not have uh, asphalt and cars there. But anyway, it was built. And uh, how much did the uh, traffic decrease in the Buddha shoot, which uh, well, it should have been decreased by zero, nothing. It did not help at all. The uh, freed up space was used by more cars because as we already uh, said, uh, each year the uh, number of cars in Budapest and Pest Media uh, increases by 40,000. It is impossible to uh, solve any problem with the building of, uh, of new people and our party places, and there is no space for that, no money for that. It's just a uh, 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 pretext uh, not to uh, take action. Can I, can I re-answer? Is it possible? Uh, 
well, okay, about the last time, because we have a lot of questions. So from okay. the next uh, uh, question, we will have one uh, answer and one uh, reaction to the, from the opposition team. But now you can, okay. Okay, <laughs> just very shortly, just very shortly. Uh, what I do not understand, uh, 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 we have heard that uh, uh, the Scandinavian examples, but uh, for example, in Scandinavia, but also as far as in the world, uh, the problem is solved uh, as a complex problem. Everywhere uh, parking spaces were built. I have already told the Stockholm example, but this was the case uh, everywhere else. We cannot solve the problem uh, by taking only part of the examples that uh, 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 were mentioned earlier. Further, how will we dealt, how will we deal with uh, the new cars which are coming uh, uh, every single year from the suburbs? This is the, uh, the new Roto does not give a solution to it, according to Andras Lukács, because where will the people park their cars if their numbers are steadily growing? Okay, thank great. you. Thank you, me as well. <laughs> okay, the next question is also for uh, proposition. No, for sorry, for opposition again. So, uh, why do you expect to park your car anywhere for free where it is where it takes up public space? And you have two minutes to answer this question and then one minute uh, for the other team to react. Because uh, according to the uh, uh, road toll system, um, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, we would go uh, uh, to the downtown area, and uh, it has uh, the uh, uh, the alternative solution should be uh, um, uh, uh, positive or should be advantages for the uh, uh, for the car owners. But this is not. This was just a part of uh, my argumentation. Such uh, uh, parking spaces are not built period. So uh, another question could be whether it should be free to park there or not, but there is not enough space. We cannot park the cars. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, uh, according, um, uh, if there is uh, not enough space for my, my parking, what, what there is a problem with the price you know if uh, in a normal market economy uh, the prices uh, regulates uh, the uh, the demand and uh, and uh, the offer if there is in a, is uh, there is something which is uh, uh, not sufficient then the prices rise but it, uh, we should introduce in the par market economy also in the parking and uh, this is not only my idea the european according to the european parking association uh, the uh, parking fees should be such uh, that there should be always uh, at least 15% uh, uh, free place in the given area. So uh, the, uh, if the uh, there are very low prices for, so for parking, of course, there will be never, never enough space. Then the, the space will be taken away from the cyclists, from the pedestrians, uh, the uh, trees will be cut as uh, or cars will park everywhere on the green uh, areas. This is uh, impossible. Uh, the prices of parking should reflect the real cost of public space and public space is uh, very, very expensive, especially in the city. If you would okay. like to- Andras, sorry. Oh, yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, no. sorry. Okay, sorry, but we have a lot of questions and we would like to answer them all. So the next question is for proposition. How would zoning type of toll focus, focusing on the downtown affect the outskirts? How is that fair? Uh, no, it is. It, it it would not be fair. Uh, that is why we propose uh, uh, because uh, we have seen it, for example, in London, that uh, uh, there was a small downtown area where they introduced the congestion charge, and uh, it uh, resulted in more congestion and more parking problems just outside the zone. That is why we propose a distance and pollution based uh, 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 system. Uh, toll in all Budapest. 
Of course, there should be, there can be differentiation. If there is a, a road, we know that, a, that it is a very congested. There could be a higher fee, but uh, maybe at first we should just uh, introduce the same fee in all of Budapest, and then uh, see uh, what is the result, and uh, then maybe modify that. Okay. Thank you. Any reaction to that? In one minute. Okay, if no, not, then. Me. Okay, then we'll move uh, on to well, that. I, if I may just have a, a little reaction. So that's still, yeah. still you have to, you have to like also take into account some very um, far, uh, like very like suburbs that are, are, are very much underserved by the public transit. So therefore those drivers really are, you know, forced to use their cars uh, to to go into the, the city to park somewhere like get, get closer to the city um, itself and then use the public transit maybe or use their bikes or whatever but um, you, you just have to see that in the suburbs there are many zones that are not you know just not connected to the the, the public transit system of Budapest on one hand and on the other hand these areas are sometimes poor areas so those people are not just uh, not well served, but um, but also uh, economically deprived, um, and therefore it's like sort of taxing the the poor living in the suburbs for being poor and for living in the suburbs. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the next question: uh, How can we tackle the da data security issue of road toll? The state could see every car journey, but many people don't want to share these information. So I think this goes to uh, proposition as well. Yes, uh, first of all, the state doesn't have to know uh, where the car goes. It, uh, what it has to know, uh, it has to know only how much you have to pay in a certain period, for example, in January 2022. And uh, that's all the state has to know. So there is an onboard unit which registers everything, all the data, where the car goes, how, uh, and so on. And uh, the only the uh, the uh, sum which has to be paid should be transferred to the state. And if you are uh, very uh, concerned about uh, your privacy, please throw away your mobile phone. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, any reaction? <laughs> okay. Then I'll go uh, again for a question to opposition. Don't you think that if it's economically worth for someone to take a job in the city center while living in a nice suburban house, then this person should also be uh, able to afford to pay for the cause air, pu air pollution and congest congestion, sorry. Otherwise she or he should find a job nearer to his or her home. There are also uh, nice suburban houses, but as Peter Kish has already mentioned earlier, a lot of people have moved uh, outside the city because of financial reasons, because to live in the city became, in the last couple of years, extremely expensive. They do not live in uh, uh, expensive houses in the suburbs. They live in the suburbs in relatively uh, uh, normal or, or uh, uh, unexpensive houses or in flats because this is what they can afford and they still have to go to the city because uh, they work there or because the, uh, the kids go to school there or for various reasons. So uh, I don't think that this is a fair uh, argumentation that all the people who live in the suburbs have uh, expensive houses, expensive cars, and they should pay, pay for the air pollution, or they should find uh, a, a, a working place closer to their homes. Okay, Andras, uh, yes. one minute. So I am very sorry to say this, but this is the, Really, economically, this is uh, 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 really very, uh, very unjustifiable. So that we should subsidize all the people, the rich and the poor, because uh, there are some poor people. No, 
then if there are so, uh, problems, uh, there, uh, there are poor people, then we, we should subsidize the poor and not everyone. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's just a waste of money and it's very perverse. So, and uh, there are uh, really many, many people in the, in the suburbs who are really rich. And another thing, uh, how to uh, go, uh, many people could uh, switch to public transport, uh, uh, many people could uh, uh, switch to cycling. Uh, just to mention my example, I live in Budapest. My office is in Budapest, in the center uh, near Karvintér. And I regularly go there by bike. It's 11 kilometers. Earlier I had a, a normal bike, but now I am getting older. So last year I decided to buy a, a pedelec, uh, which I, I uh, also uh, I do not uh, use the engine very much. I pedal to the office. Why cannot other people? I go to this office on a on the bicycle lane, on the bicycle path, and there are very few people which are, whom I meet. Why can't the others do that? And it's healthy. It's much healthy, and it's. Uh, I think I enjoy it much better than sitting in a car, or or on in public transport. It's just uh, the mindset of the people. My, hey, Andres, uh, sorry, your sorry. time is over. Thank you very much. So we have uh, two more questions from Facebook. One is for proposition. So the opposition team mentioned that the number of times the necessity of finishing M0 first. Is that still necessary? What did the proposition team think about this issue? Uh, well, the proposition thinks that uh, we are uh, in a climate crisis and we shouldn't think about uh, building new roads. And also as uh, we uh, said uh, earlier, new roads mean new traffic. Uh, because it's uh, uh, in economic theory, it, it, it results from a simple economic theory. If you make something cheaper, it means you can get that easier, then more people will use it. So uh, uh, everywhere where new roads were built, they did not solve anything. And for example, in the United States, uh, uh, billions, uh, tens of billions of dollars were spent uh, for many years on building uh, new roads uh, in cities and around cities and congestion increased all the time. So nowhere could the, the, uh, the problem be solved by uh, building new roads. And uh, furthermore, the M0, uh, the northern part would grow uh, through a natural area. The uh, people have been protesting there already for many years uh, on all uh, the villages and towns there. So it, it will be never built, uh, I, I, I think. Okay, thank you. Any reaction from the other team? Well, maybe we could just prohibit people using their cars because uh, if we don't develop the uh, uh, infrastructure, then we should just uh, prohibit the people to, to use their cars. That would be the easiest way uh, uh, to solve this problem, according to uh, Andras Lukács, because uh, we, uh, uh, roads should not be uh, uh, developed, roads should not be built. Uh, uh, basically what uh, uh, Andras Lukács says that people uh, should not use their cars uh, no matter what, but uh, clearly it has to be emphasized that there are people who have to use their cars for various reasons and they don't use their cars because uh, uh, they do not want to use their bicycles, but, but because they, for various reasons, uh, uh, they have to uh, go by car, they have to transport their kids by car, they have to go to work by car. And uh, the road toll system itself does not solve uh, the, uh, uh, the problems that were uh, 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 mentioned by uh, all of us. Partly, it's, it's, it would be only a party solution if the road toll system would be introduced alone and nothing else would be done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, a question for also for proposition. How do you make sure people pay the road toll? What if they simply turn off the device that is calculating the fee? 
Right. Well, this problem is uh, already solved. Uh, this uh, such a road toll exists in many countries, uh, but it is used for trucks. Uh, and uh, for example, in Hungary, more than 99.9% uh, .9 of the uh, of the trucks pay this toll uh, because uh, they have to. If they cheat. Uh, then they are caught very easily. So this is not, this is uh, with the today's uh, technology. This is not a problem. Um, can I make a remark? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it was also mentioned that uh, in the future, uh, such toll system should be introduced not only in Budapest but also in other cities of Hungary and basically overall of Hungary. If this will be the case, why do why does such a toll system have to be introduced? Why don't we just uh, introduce a new tax? Because basically, uh, every single person who owns a car has to pay uh, such kind of uh, 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 duty or tax or road toll, whatever we call it. Okay, thank Ex you. Ex expense, expensive infrastructure in Budapest should not be. Uh, uh, built just uh, 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 just to be able to uh, collect this money. If uh, uh, everywhere else uh, uh, the road toll should be paid. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the you. last question goes for both teams, I think. Uh, so both team, though both team, both team can answer it after each other. So should there be a referendum about the road toll? If yes, should it be organized at a district or a city level? Um, Andras, will you answer it first or shall oh, I go please, please. for it? Okay. Uh, um, a referendum may be possible if the relevant information is given to the people. This is, this is the most important issue what I would like to uh, uh, say. Uh, people cannot uh, uh, vote if they do not know what they vote about. As I mentioned earlier, I am personally not against road toll if I know the characteristic and, uh, and, and uh, uh, exactly uh, know what I should expect. Currently, uh, the answers, the questions are not answered. And until uh, these answers are not uh, given to the people, I don't think that uh, a referendum uh, uh, could be possible because it would only be a theoretical referendum. And uh, therefore, it is just a waste of time and money in my point of view. Yes, uh, I completely agree that uh, people should be informed and there should be studies and feasibility studies about this. And But I think that uh, the referendum uh, should be uh, only after the road toll was introduced, just as it was uh, the, uh, done with the congestion charge in Stockholm. Uh, there was, a, of course, there was also a big uh, debate about uh, the uh, implementation of the uh, congestion charge. And they decided to implement it only for six months and then have a referendum. And after the six months, there was a referendum and most of the people voted uh, for the uh, road toll. So uh, uh, yes, people should be given information, but one thing is information and the other thing is when they see how it works. So it should be implemented and then the people should vote for it. Uh, may I make a remark? what would happen with the extremely expensive infrastructure if the people say no? Uh, well, uh, this uh, infrastructure is not uh, so expensive. It may be a few uh, 10 or 20 billion forints. Uh, it's just a fraction of what is uh, the cost of uh, building a big stadium. So. Uh, if the people and, and say no, it then it is extremely expensive because it was spent for nothing. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I think the questions round is over. And now I would like to, as the audience, to uh, vote at last. And uh, will you, after the votes are in, 
we'll see that which side won the whole debate. And also the people on, uh, who are watching on Facebook can also write their votes in chat. Uh, and I'd like to ask all of our viewing members and uh, all the aud audience to vote on this, um, this matter because it is important, this decides the whole debate. We have 18% of people who voted, so I like to encourage everybody to uh, vote for this question. Okay, so uh, now I'll close the vote. And uh, you are muted. Sorry, so <laughs> I said that I will now close the vote and summarize the uh, points. And until that, I would like to have two questions for the experts. So one question for the experts and one for the debaters. First for the experts. So this is your first formal debate probably. How did it feel? What do, uh, what do, do you like? What did you like about it? And what didn't you like about it? Okay, I, I, I start again. Uh, first of all, it was uh, great fun uh, to debate on this uh, 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 kind of, uh, let's say, surface. Normally, I do it in Hungarian and in a courtroom. This is something else, uh, another format, uh, but uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, no matter uh, uh, what the result will be, uh, I won because uh, it was great to work with uh, uh, Peter Kish and thank you, uh, thank you for uh, his contribution. I think uh, he did a, a great job and also I would like to thank uh, Andras Lukaj because uh, uh, to debate with him uh, is uh, also great fun and uh, uh, and uh, he is very experienced in this uh, field, and uh, uh, therefore I would like to thank him as well. And of course, uh, I'd like to thank uh, George Namash, uh, 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 who did a great job uh, as well. And uh, of course, I'd like to thank to the organizers. And uh, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, 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 this uh, debate was. Uh, not held uh, in, in a room and we couldn't meet personally, but uh, therefore I didn't have to travel by my car. So uh, everything has advantage and disadvantage. So thank you. Thank you for you as well. And Andraj also. Yes. Uh, thank you. Well, I, I, I can say the same thing what uh, Sabor said. So uh, yes, thank you very much to everyone. It really, I think it was a great debate. So debate. So um, thank you for organizing it. And I am very happy that uh, the representative of uh, Magyar Auto Club um, accepted this challenge. And um, I would like to really thank thank my partner, <laughs> Nemesh, Nemesh Dury, uh, uh, for his uh, contribution and to everyone. And uh, I think this debate will continue and we we'll learn a lot and also about how to uh, <clears throat> debate with each other. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for this debate. Uh, the results are in. I think, personally, that this was a really great debate. And now, uh, on the screen, you will see 
the first uh, the first votes uh, results. So as you can see, 68% of the audience uh, voted for proposition. So 68% of the uh, the voters would uh, like to introduce the to uh, road toll. And uh, on the second uh, second vote, you will see on the screen. Uh, the count has gone down and only 67% of the people um, supported the, uh, the introduction of road toll. So these were uh, before the questions. And now you'll see that what the voting ratio gone to after the questions. So as you can see, the voting uh, ratio gone, was uh, gone up almost with 7% for proposition. So at the beginning, they had 68%. And at the end, they had 75%. So they convinced more people than opposition. So the formal winner of this debate is proposition. But I think since this was a really great debate, we can call uh, all debaters and all experts a winner, because this was a really uh, high quality debate. So uh, thank you everybody for coming today. And uh, thank you for the experts, Szabolcs Kovács and Andres Lukács for attending. And also thank you for the debaters to, uh, who debated. Um, and I would like to encourage everyone who's listening to this stream and uh, who is in the audience to uh, like the debate uh, at the debate club and Corvinus Debate Society on Facebook and maybe also come to an event. Uh, we have events on Monday. Uh, they are really great. Uh, you can see, you can also debate. You can try out yourself if you like this whole uh, public debate and this whole forum. Uh, you can also uh, try yourself out and try debating. Uh, and yes, thank you everyone for coming. And we'll see each other probably. <laughs> Thank and you. Probably we Thank have you. Uh, you more uh, public debates when the coronavirus is over, and we will have uh, not through Zoom, but in not in online, but in live. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you indeed. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.